Alright guys, today we're going to do the review for MX vs. ATV Legends. I do apologize that it's been 6 or 7 months and we still haven't gotten it out, but I felt like this was a good time for it. I have almost 200 hours in the game on PC and console, and it just felt like a good time to do the review. I do want to show you where the game began and where it is now. Even if you haven't bought the game, or if you have bought the game, I feel like that's important to see how it released versus where it is now. So. We're gonna jump into that and check it out first. So this would have been gameplay from the way the game was when it first released. It did release in a little bit of a rocky state. We did, I did have some concerns about it and I did voice them. Some people say we didn't, but we definitely did. The biggest concerns were that there was a decent amount of bugs, especially on console. It was very, very slippery and you will see a little bit of that here. The rider was pretty stiff and it was just missing a bunch of content, such as the customization. So you saw it there when we tried to jump into that rut, the how slippery it really could be. Plus there was some weird bouncing that could happen when you were trying to land. But then mid-life of MX vs. ATV Legends would be this gameplay. They had done a few patches, they had adjusted on the sounds a bit. The rider was still pretty stiff. The sliding was a lot better. They had added traction to the game, and it was still a bit slippery, but you could actually get into the ruts and use them and not push over every single berm in the game, and it was a lot better. The bouncing had been improved, it was still there, but it was a lot better, and they had done some bug fixes. And then here we are today, this is after the newest patch, there's been several patches put out to the game to improve it. The rider is way less stiff, he has more animations to him. To free him up a bit the sounds have been reworked a little bit again the sliding is even better than it was before it's easier to get into specifically the ruts and they hold you better and you just don't push out of them as, as easy you can hit them faster ride them harder it's just better in general so the game has definitely improved a lot since the beginning. There has also been a few physics updates to change that a bit, adjust on it, and they're not done. They've mentioned they plan on doing more, so I just felt like it was important to show you how the game released versus where it is now, and it is in a lot better state, in my opinion, than it was in the very beginning. So now we get into the meat and potatoes of the review. We're going to start with the customization of the bike here. So the bike customization, you can customize all the parts of the bike. The problem is it is just for looks. It's cosmetic only. And you only have two, one or two different actual brands to put on the bike right now. There isn't a ton of parts for the bike to customize it and that's unfortunate. Now they have added in seat covers and graphics kits and the ability to customize the number plate color, the numbers and the seat. So any customization is good, but we need more. And they did add in graphics kits. They're not the best, but again, any customization added to the game is good customization. Next up, rider customization. The system for this is pretty good. The problem is, as you will see, we don't have too many options to customize the rider. So they did add in a few different helmets, a few different gloves, and a few different gear sets, but not very much. They have said they're gonna add more in future patches and updates, but as of right now, there isn't a lot. Now, one thing they did do that's pretty cool is they did separate the jersey from the pants. So if you wanna have a fox jersey and O'Neal pants, you can do it, or just mix and match how you want. They also did add the ability to color customize certain pieces of gear. So the rider customization is good, but yet we, we just, we need a bit more added to the game. Now I do want to talk about the tuning a bit. So the tuning, these are all the parts of the bike you can actually tune, just showing you what parts there are, and the tuning is the same for every part. So you have a base setting in the middle, and then you can go three left or three right. And depending on how you mix and match your your tuning, it'll make the bike react and handle differently. So you just have to mix and match and decide what you like. If you have more traction, that you can have more traction, but it'll make the bike harder to turn. So there is a negative to every positive, basically. 
And I did think it was important to put this in the game. People were concerned about it in the beginning. In the beginning, there wasn't any controller settings, but now they've added several manual and automatic controller settings to the game, so you can choose a different one. You still can't individually bind keys, but it is better than when it came out. Now, the career is pretty decent. You have MX, ATV, UTV. We chose MX. This is where we are. You have motocross, supercross, straight rhythm, trails, all scattered throughout the career. Now, you can swap out some series. For example, supercross, you can run the east or the west, depending on what tracks you want to play. And it just keeps doing it throughout many, 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 many weeks. It is a bit long and drawn out, but there is a story to it. So... After certain races, you can go over to some NPCs, Mr. Rawlings, for example, here, and he'll give you coins, moto coin, bikes, or just talk to you. Like I said, there is a story. Or there's another NPC here at the bottom named Cat. They get you signed up for races and, and whatnot. They're kind of your PR person. And then you have a, a mechanic in the garage. But doing the career is important because you get certain unlocks to the the farm here that you wouldn't get if you didn't do the career for example the the garage here up at the top to the right it was a barn we improved it we upgraded it the building behind us is different we got that from the career you also unlock certain jumps and ramps throughout the the compound so doing the career is necessary if you want to have everything in the game now for the tracks, environment, and AI. The tracks this time around are fantastic. The motocross tracks are super fun, very unique and original, and it feels like they kind of went back to their roots for designing some of these outdoor base stock national tracks in the game. They're super fun. There's very few that I don't like. Even the supercross tracks are really good. For example, we have Seattle here. This track is one of the more difficult ones. It's very technical and there's a bunch of line choice and there's some huge lines you can go for that are very difficult. The Supercross tracks are really fun too. I really don't have too many complaints about any of the base stock tracks in the game. Now I do want to cover it because I do think it is a bit important even if it is DLC but if you buy the 2022 track pass for 25 bucks I believe you get a bunch of content. You get the 2022 Pro Motocross National tracks, such as Unadilla or Redbud, which we show you in the video here. They're the same tracks, the same layout, design, everything as the as what you would have saw during the 2022 Pro Motocross Championship Series in real life. They're super fun. They've adjusted on them to make them more accurate to, to real life several times with several different patches. They've also added in their own original Supercross tracks in the Supercross World Tour DLC, which is a part of the track pass. There are six Supercross tracks in three different environments. They're some of the best Supercross tracks in the game. They're significantly different from the base Supercross tracks. So it, you don't have to get it. It is just DLC, but they're so well done that I felt like it was worth mentioning aside from the base game. But the base tracks in the game are just as good as the DLC tracks. And the environments, the free ride open world maps are super fun, super big, super pretty, really beautiful environments with a bunch of detail and a bunch of trails. The problem with the, the environments and the free ride maps is that it doesn't feel like there's a ton to do in them. There's a bunch of trails, but most of the time it just kind of feels like you're riding around on a really wide, flat road. You're just kind of wide open throttle and... Yeah, there's some gorgeous scenery, but there isn't much to do. I think the game would benefit. Now, it isn't that way for everything. Sometimes it does feel like you're in a deep forest or scaling a mountain with a bunch of turns, but I think the game would benefit from having more tight trails with more turns and more difficulty than just having these really flat, easy, mindless gameplay to them. The trails definitely could benefit from a rework and more free ride lines to hit, more fun big lines to hit in the open world. The AI is really bad. I'm showing you here at the beginning, we started at the very back of the pack. We have the AI set to max difficulty, but they're crashing, they're bouncing, they're very slow. They're just not good. There have been several updates to improve it, but as of right now, the time of this review, 
they're still really bad. They can be faster at other tracks and or certain tracks and others, but they're just really easy. If you try even a tiny bit, you're probably going to be able to win a race on maximum difficulty. So the AI has been worked on a bit, but they're nowhere near where they need to be. They're just not good. They're really slow. They're not very smart. They just need to be a lot better than, than where they're at. Here's the classes of vehicles that are in the game. You have the quads, you have the 125, 252 strokes, you have the 250, 454 strokes, and the UTVs. Now, most of these are DLC, but they do have the equivalent in the game in the Rainbow, THQ Nordic, Phoenix, Gold Bikes. So you don't have to buy the DLC. It's just a skin. It's just for looks, but um, that is an option if you want the actual OEM manufacturer. So... Yes, the, the DLC is there, but you don't need it because they have the base ones in the game. Now, I do want to let you hear the sound. The sound is very similar to what it was in MX vs. ATV All Out. A, a little bit of changing, but it's basically the same. The sound is not good enough. It needs to be better. I would say that's one of the worst parts about the game. So, here's the sound. Didn't want to talk over it. Check it out. The physics is the last part we're going to talk about. If the physics aren't fun in a dirt bike game, generally speaking, the game isn't going to be that fun. Now, I am going to talk about the in-air physics first, and we are using the 454 stroke. So, the physics are free. They're completely free. You have complete control of the bike and rider again. Or I don't know if I said it, but you can have single stick control or dual stick control. I'm using dual stick. I think most people do, but you don't have to. And the thing about the 450, and I'm going to show you the 250 here in a bit. The way the bike is, it does feel a bit heavy in the air. The rotation of trying to whip the bike can feel a bit slow at times. And I feel like they could speed that up a bit. It isn't bad, and I am happy with where it's at. But here I'm going to show you on the two-stroke, it's way it feels way lighter, which is great. But the whipping, it's also very, very quick to whip the bike on the 252 stroke you can throw it out and bring it back really 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 easy it's much easier i'm not saying it's hard on the 450 but it's much easier on the 252 stroke so um, just keep that in mind it's different it's the same concept as the 450 but it's much easier on the 252 stroke the 450 feels great just a bit slower and maybe a little bit heavier which is fine that's that's perfectly fine and they have said they're going to be adjusting on physics throughout the probably the lifespan of the game so i'm really curious to see where the game will be in the end versus where it is now now i also want to talk about the ground physics so again you have complete control of the bike and rider but the ground physics they can be a bit slippery still you can run into a few weird bounces here and there but it is a lot better than when it came out I know some people will still complain that it's a bit slippery. If you buy the game for the first time, you're probably going to have a little bit of a challenge learning how slippery it can be and how to break at the right time and whatnot. Now, I'm fine with that because I feel like the game needs to have some slip in it, some give. If it doesn't have that give, I don't want to have 100% traction all the time. I think it's still fun, but I think it adds a little bit of difficulty to it. And I know it's supposed to be an arcade game. But I'm fine with where it's at. If they adjust on it too, that's great, but I'm fine with where it's at right now. And the whoops can be very difficult. If you don't have the right technique, you can crash in those bad boys. They can actually be pretty difficult. So the physics, they're free. I'm happy with where they're at. Some people won't be because of how slippery they can be. But um, we don't know where they're going to be when the game is fully done. Because they have said they're going to be adjusting on them in the future. 
And for this part of the video, this is just some final thoughts I have on the game. I'm not going to tell you to buy the game or not buy the game. I'm going to show you some facts, show you some gameplay, give you some opinions on it, and the, you ultimately are the one to decide. I do apologize that this review is coming out so late. I mean, the game has been out for six or seven months already, but if you were on the fence or whatever, hopefully this can help you. Now, one final thing I do want to say that I feel like is a turnoff for a majority or a lot of players is that, yes, the game is different. Yes, the game had bugs when it came out. And even now, I still see people complaining a lot. And that's fine. That's If, they don't, if you don't enjoy it, that's perfectly fine. But I feel like one thing that really turns players off from this game is that they start you out on a stock 125 with no money. You jump into the career, you're playing the tracks, and it feels like you can't get up the hills, it feels like you're casing everything, it isn't tuned very good, so you can't, you don't have, have even have it upgraded, so the in-air physics feel a bit weird. The game, unfortunately, I get what they were going for, but you have to give it a bit of time. Play enough to where you can upgrade your bike, get used to the physics a, a bit, and then buy a different bike instead of the 125. Buy a 250 two-stroke or a 450 four-stroke and see how you feel about it then. I feel like that was a big problem with this game is it starts you out and I get why they did it but it isn't the most fun experience playing the game that way and it's unfortunate. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, how you feel about the game. Did you buy it? Do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? Haven't you bought it? Did this help? I'd be really curious to see. But you guys and girls are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for the support on the channel lately. It really does mean a lot. And until the next video, take it easy.